And there is one more level that uh, we often find, but maybe 5% of the population. It depends a bit on your data set of how many, but not very few we call the strategists, or yellow is parallel to that. And that is, again, the, uh, a new integration, whereas the individualist looks backward and says, I'm not that, I'm not like these achievers, I'm not formal operational only, I'm all these other things as well. This person is more turning this way and looks at uh, a much larger picture that the underlying principles, for instance, of why human life is important. The, the, the time frame a person looks at is, is a whole lifetime, including past generations and future generations. They will no longer look at the three to five year plans like it's so, you know, short term plans like it's so common in business. They actually look at, their, at the whole lifetime and they're aware of the consequences of actions that go way beyond their own actually their own sphere of influence. And they will take those into account in their decision making. And this morning we talked a bit about sustainability. In order to think in sustainable ways, you have to have more of a perspective like that. What are the long-term consequences? What do we want to happen? What do we not want to happen? Can we even imagine, can we build some scenarios that uh, set out, hypothesize what different actions might be down the line. That is something the strategists can do that the individualists cannot yet do because they, again, they don't prioritize. Every opinion is as good and as valid as any other. And you get in, in organizations, you get the endless meetings where everybody's voice is heard and no decisions are made. I'm sure you're all aware of that. Hmm? Painfully so, yes. And again, let's not forget, this is such a shift and a greater capacity than before. That one can, like anywhere, we can get sort of stuck in something. If that's where your possibilities sort of end, you can end up in, in endless discussions and no decisions being made. New for the strategist, he will or she will listen to many opinions. She might not ask everybody, or he might not ask everybody, but they will certainly get the input from important stakeholders. And then they can make a decision. They dare to do that based on their overall knowledge and seeing the larger picture and having good input from a cabinet or from the people, the, you know, the different stakeholders, if it's a company that's incorporated. And that is a, a totally different story. It is also the first time where somebody can look at their whole system of meaning making and realize that what they have been going through developmentally is also true for others. And therefore, they can have tolerance for that difference. The individualist still tends to flock with others that are similar to themselves, to prefer that worldview over any other and to say the others are actually not valuable. I may listen to them, but I still think mine is definitely one you ought to have. This is the first stage capable, in, if it's well inhabited, to truly appreciate that different people are functioning from different levels, therefore deserve different approaches, different language, different expectations in order to bring out the best in them. And they can understand others and treat them more appropriate to that person, to the level of that person, rather than assuming everybody should be like myself. And what I see as sometimes the shadow is, there is again a great sense of self-esteem that's based on the fundamental sort of experience that I understand human beings. Because I'm a human being, I can understand other human beings. 
and that is held with a deep sense of appreciation of others, and it is a little bit of a trap. Because if you develop further, you start to question that sort of thing as well. Whether it's sufficient to be a human being to understand other human beings always. Whether they're not even more fundamental things that make that harder. The second step is not only asking what are the culturally and societally programmed ideas that I have, but it actually looks at the underlying fundamental ways of how all human beings make meaning. That that is part of what makes us human beings, is that we are map maker, human, uh, that we need stories. We, whatever the culture, we tell stories about where we come from, where we're going, what it means to be a relative, what this means, what that means, it's always a story. And theory making is actually just a story as well. And E.O. Wilson said it beautifully, said, Science is the grandest myth of them all. So this realization that part of what makes us human is this capacity to tell story, this capacity to make theory, this capacity to recognize patterns and abstract from that and then live by it. And that is also true for my self-identification. So far, I've always been able to tell one story and another, whether I tell the story that I feel I'm like a tribe of people at the individualist stage, whether I tell the story of I'm an expert and I really know what in my field everything there is to know and I really keep up with it. Uh, here is the first time where you say, well, I am a storyteller and the story I tell changes almost by the second. As I look, as I experience, my story changes. Look just how far I have come since when I first was aware of things. Look how, how every morning I can tell a new story. Um, I can tell the stories that, that are familiar to me, but I'm also free to tell a totally new story. I'm not actually afraid of standing in front of people. I love it. It's a new story. And I'm saying that because the power that comes out of being free of the previous stories, not being bound by them, is an, again an, an, an incredible amount of new power that the person has. They can also, for that reason, and I call it the magician, uh, Torbert prefers now to call it the alchemist, I would really prefer to call it the crone because, of course, that's what I experience. Sort of the freedom to be, to play the fool. These are the people in a group will say, "Here, don't you see that big, huge white elephant in the room that everybody else doesn't see?" The strategist, in even in uh, their coach and self-representation usually tells you a coherent story, a story in which even their foibles and their Weaknesses, if you will, are presented as something I have and I'm sort of proud of. This is the person, the magician is the person who will always hold up the mirrors of society and often for that reason gets killed. It's the bringer of the bad news who is not afraid to call a spade a spade, but then also gets, gets into trouble for it. And it's a role, it's people that very often do not work in organizations, but the ones that come in and do work and then leave again. The, the, fun, the role that uh, Torbert described was this kind of person, his, his alchemist is this kind of high level consultant who can do that, can things, put things, by his mostly intuition, I think, and knowing a lot, but also by his incredible intuition, he can turn things upside down, inside out, and make a huge difference, can be transformational. There's also, again, the other one, less public person who does that kind of work by themselves. They're the, sometimes the deep thinkers in, their, in the solitude. 
what people report who are at this stage, whether they are in the public arena or in the private one, their suffering has often to do with feeling alone, with not having any peer group, not knowing anybody who thinks like them to the degree where sometimes they wonder whether they are insane. As a coach, that is the question that is often raised. And how can I keep going? I ask, well, would you want to be more simple? Would you like to be back at an earlier stage? And the unanimous response so far has always been no. I wouldn't want that, but I'm aware just how difficult my position is and how lonely. Because there's not even 1% of people test and seem to operate from this level. Mm -hmm.